So the purpose of all the thumbnails that I showed in the prelude, I put them out there as an indication of all the videos I've put out with regards to the Phalaenopsis orchids that I've been struggling with in the recent year. I say year because they are that recent with the exception of one that I'm going to show you. I have numbered all the thumbnails because if you're new to my channel, at least you know a little bit of a snippet of history here. And welcome, if it's the first time you're watching a video of mine, thank you for being here. And if you've been on my channel for all these past years, these thumbnails may be familiar, they may not be familiar. And if they're not familiar and you would like to see the video pertaining to the thumbnail, let me know in the comments and I will give you the link to that specific video. I have had a lot of success now finally being able to rescue Phalaenopsis orchids and transitioned them safely into LECA and self-watering. It took me a good part of three years to get the knack of it and I've not lost a Phalaenopsis orchid because of the setup of LECA and self-watering for a very very long time and long may that record continue. Now what I have never achieved is when I get a new Phalaenopsis in and it comes with issues that I have not been able to identify at the moment of the purchase. So there is one specific video called Be Picky when I went and got the orchid that you now see in front of you, what's left of it. I was so excited to get an in giraffe. So the thumbnails are also a roller coaster ride. There's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And what I'm going to start now with is to give you some updates on the rescue phalaenopsis that are in dire straits because it is at this point in their decline that I've never ever managed to bring an orchid back from the brink of moving away from the collection. Ninjaraf is my most recent addition to the collection and in a live stream together with Trisha's Orchid Life, we did some major surgery on her. It's been a month since then. So I'm going to start with the most recent to the oldest one that I have in my collection that is in a similar pathetic state. Since we last saw Ninjaraf in that live stream, she has lost more leaves. I have been soaking the roots in CalMag and seaweed, trying to keep them alive, working with her on a wet dry cycle. So she was just soaked yesterday. But what I've noticed is that while some roots are still looking fine, it looks like there's some activity there. I've also noticed that some roots are, mm, yeah, they're looking very, very dodgy. So I'm not exactly sure if at this stage she is going to pull through because you can see the little seedling leaf that was green up until a few days ago is also starting to brown at the base. I don't know if the stem has anything left in it, but we are going to keep going. She was treated with dragon's blood. She was decapitated, put cinnamon on her, etc. But everything that was up until a certain period of time looking like I had viable roots, they've all gone papery as well, which can happen if roots are attached to part of the stem that had stem rot. So Ninjaraf is still very sus here to me. I'll keep going, wet dry cycle, CalMag, a little bit of fertilizer every once in a while. Every time the pot goes dry, it'll get soaked again, etc. So we'll just keep going with that. I'm just not very hopeful and I'm trying to think positively here. The next gift I got from my daughter was insolence. So this is the original insolence that I have. Since I noticed when this orchid arrived as the gift that it was, it had a terminal spike, my heart sank. So I already have a replacement for her, recently transitioned into Lacan self-watering, so far doing really well. Another video on her later on. So if you have not subscribed to my channel and you're interested in the progress or the lack thereof of these very, very stressed declining orchids, please subscribe so that you won't miss those videos. And I probably jumped into this video again very, very quickly because I'm trying to keep an even keel in my voice. Gifted orchids rank very, very high in my collection and it's very difficult for me to see an orchid struggle on any given day. Having a gifted orchid decline or leave the collection, I don't really do well with that. So. I am sorry if I jumped into this video a little bit prematurely without the proper and appropriate welcome. Thank you so, so much for being here. 
If you would like to lift my spirits a little bit, liking the video will also help a lot, <laughs> at least with my self-esteem. If not with the algorithm, at least with my self-esteem. So thank you very, very much. Now, insolence, as mentioned, that was one of the thumbnails, had the terminal spike, my heart sank. Here we are. It's now seven months later, and the decline has been insane fast to watch. She had five spikes. One of them included the terminal spike, that's the leaf up here. And you can see she's got two green spikes left since the last time we saw her. The next spike has gotten brown. I can pretty much cut that off, but I'm not going to. And during the live stream with Trisha's Orchid Life, she told me to pot her up, something that I wouldn't have done. I would have left her in the swag and bag method. And she was in the swag and bag method for a good part of six weeks, keeping the sphagnum moss damp and then making sure that the leaves that she's got left don't dehydrate or lose too much transpiration from the dry air that I have. I was also asked that I should cut off all the spikes so that the orchid can regenerate. And well, while I did cut off all the blooms at the first opportunity after taking pictures and introducing her to you, I did not cut off any of the spikes because I'm a firm believer that spikes have energy and if the orchid is going to take up any energy that she doesn't have she can use spikes in order to do that and also i was hoping for a keiki from the spikes if she can't grow a little plant at the base of the orchid well the nodes of the spikes also give another opportunity for her to grow a keiki that is what i was hoping for in my second collection when i had phalaenopsis I got quite a few keikis. It seems like now they're bred to a different standard. They're bred with terminal spikes, and then they're also bred to not try to save themselves. Well, on that live stream, I potted her up. Instructions were to keep the base here very, very airy, but to keep a lot of humidity around the base, and that sphagnum moss is always, always damp. During the day, I've got the plastic rolled up. As you saw, at night, I roll the plastic down so that she can breathe from whatever stomata are capable of functioning. Oh, one of the leaves here has gone dry. Luckily, she is not affected by any mealybugs. But I need to show you something if you haven't already seen this. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> and I don't want to get my hopes up either because it's like a roller coaster with these, okay? So, look. This is what I was hoping for, that she would at least try to use a node from a spike to grow a keiki. And there are developments. That <laughs> mm, trying not to cry. On top of that, there is something growing out where this leaf joins that terminal spike. I don't know what that is. I don't particularly care but she is trying. There was also a root nubbin that I was eyeing and hoping for. I do not see that the root nubbin has gotten any progress whatsoever, no. So forgive me if at this point in time, I'm more concerned about rolling up the plastic again to protect whatever she is trying to do because she actually lives indoors. She has bright light, not overly exaggerated bright light, but there's enough light for her to work with on the shelf that she lives in without stressing her out. So fingers crossed that insolence and her little keiki will manage to form because there's not much energy left in this orchid. She has those two leaves, she's got this leaf, and she has two green spikes to work with. No roots in the pot, and that's kind of scary. And that's why this is such a roller coaster ride. Suddenly you have hope and you're excited, there is relief, and you get this anticipation feeling. And you know, at any moment, it can all go downhill very, very quickly. And the disappointment is back in spades. Anywho, so this is my KTC Kaokicha Kuchi, is not a complex Phalaenopsis orchid at all. She's a novelty fell. She's an extremely slow grower and she struggles through my winter conditions. 
However, her spikes always stayed green, even after she lost all the leaves. So I didn't unpot her, I left her alone. That is one of my mantras that I'm always advocating is if an orchid is stressed, leave her in the pot, work with the media in the pot according to pH, etc., just to make sure that a stressed orchid doesn't get even more stressed by messing around with a repot. Well, if nothing else, this would prove a point of mine as to leave an orchid alone. Long term, I do not have high hopes for the survival of this orchid because my winter conditions are absolutely contrary to what this orchid wants. And on top of that, the Kalkicha Kut is a very slow grower. So I don't don't have a long window of time during which I can get these summer bloomers to regain their strength in order then to ride out the really adverse conditions they have to deal with during my winters. Still, I didn't unpot her. I had green spikes. When the last leaf fell, I had still something trying to grow right here. So that was the point that I was always observing. And I make sure that there's water and very weak fertilizer in the pot and then lo and behold, as you just saw, here we have a plantlet starting at the base. So you see, when it came to the cold damage, the leaves were lost. It wasn't stem rot, it wasn't any of that. It was just the stress of the cold. It broke down the cell structure of everything she had and not having enough time to recover and grow enough foliage during the most ideal months of the year being a slow grower. Well, that is why this one, I feel, was an okay candidate to keep and watch and observe because if it had been stem rot, the spikes would have also declined. And that little green thing right in the back that I've been watching for over seven months now, that would have declined straight away as well. As we saw with the roots on Ninjaraf, anything with stem rot, anything that grows out of that stem, it will decline. It doesn't stand a chance. So the stem with my Kalkicha Kut is fine. And I just wanted to update you on the fact that, yeah, there are signs of life. So why am I not doing cartwheels around the patio? That is because winter is coming. Even though I'm saying this while we're still in July, mm, winter is coming faster than this orchid will be able to gain any form of strength. And then we'll just have to wait and see. But if you would be so kind as to continue to keep your fingers crossed for my ninja raft, we're just going to be observing KTC Kalkicha Kut for the sake of observing her. And if you would be so kind as to root for that little keiki in my insolence, because I don't mind having two of them. I don't. If the keiki on the OG pulls through and I have the 2.0 doing well, one day they can be in a beautiful big pot all together. We're talking many, many years from now. Next step, please let that keiki make it. And of course, I'm gonna be observing what is growing in that leaf that we saw on the terminal spike, because if there's two keikis coming, it's gonna be a question of how much energy does this orchid have? Can she develop both? Or am I going to have to intervene and take one off so that the focus is on one only? All these considerations are now under observation on a daily basis. So I consider everybody that watched this video a cheerleader and and with your pom-poms, give these orchids a thumbs up. And if you want to be around for whatever the outcome is, please subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.